First, we remove all jewelry because microorganisms can lodge in the setting of jewelry and under rings. Second, we wet our hands with warm water because hot water may damage our skin. And then we apply 1 to 2 pumps of soap. And knob soap should be used on the latter part of the palms, back of our hands, fingers, and thumbs. After we apply enough soap, we now lather soap and rub palms together. It is for us to ensure that all surfaces of our palms are covered with soap. After we lather the soap, we rub in between fingers and around fingers. It is for us to ensure that all surfaces of the fingers are covered with soap. Interlacing the fingers and the thumbs ensures that all surfaces are cleansed. After we rub our hands, we now press and round fingernails and fingertips into the palm of the opposite hand. To ensure all surfaces around the fingertip are covered with soap using friction to remove debris and oil. Now, the rotational rubbing of the thumb class in the right palm and vice versa. We now rinse hand underwater by keeping fingers pointing downward toward the drain. Rinsing mechanically washes away dirt and microorganisms. After rinsing, we pat hands dry using clean paper towel. Use a general action to prevent skin irritation. Using a clean paper towel, turn off the faucet. Paper towel prevents recontamination of hands by touching dirty faucet handles. Now, hands are safe to use. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Angel Mar Evangelista from the group 4 of PSN1 and for today I will be doing a return demonstration on the alcohol-based hand rub procedure. So why alcohol-based hand rub? It is because it is a product that contains 60% to 90% alcohol concentration which is recommended for hand hygiene in the healthcare settings. It is the preferred method of hand hygiene and is more effective than washing hands with soap and water for the reason that first it kills the majority of germs including viruses from our hands second it requires less time to use than soap and water third it is easy to use and have high levels of availability at the point of care and for the last one it provides better skin tolerability so now let's go to the actual procedure for the actual procedure let us remember that this should be done on a minimum time of 20 to 30 seconds. So for our first step, um, if you have jewelry, make sure that you remove all of them. This is very important since microorganisms can also exist on that jewelry. Second, apply 1 to 2 pumps of product into the palm of dry hands. Enough product should be applied to thoroughly wet hands and fingers for the entire procedure of 20 to 30 seconds. Next, rub hands together, palm to palm. Rub alcohol over entire surface of the palm. Next, rub the back of the hands. Rubbing the back of the hands allows all surfaces of the fingers to be exposed to the cleaning product. Next, Rub the alcohol between all the fingers to cover all the fingers. Rubbing between the fingers allow all the surfaces of hands to be exposed to the product. Next, press fingertips into the palm of opposing hand and rub them back and forth. Pressing fingertips in the opposing palms and rubbing ensures fingertips and nails are exposed to the cleaning product. Nails harbor more bacteria than our hands, remember. Next, rub each thumb in a circular motion in the palm of the opposite hand. Rubbing each thumb provides complete coverage of the product on the thumb. Next, rub hands together until they are dry. Do not use a paper towel to dry our hands. Rubbing hands together provides adequate time for the alcohol to dry. So now, our hands are now safe to use.
step, perform hand hygiene with alcohol-based hand rubbing or ABHR. The rationale of these hands should be cleaned before putting on the gloves. Second step, select appropriate size of necessary gloves that will fit your hands and you will remove them from the box just by touching the ends of the gloves to pull them out. The rationale of this, finding the right size of your hands will make you comfortable and not, and not feel uneasy while performing a procedure. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Christine May Talang and I'm from Group 4 and today I'm going to uh, discuss to you the proper way of doffing gloves. So just as it is very important for us to carefully put on our sterile gloves to prevent contamination to the patient, it is also important for us to properly remove our gloves so that it will help us prevent contaminating ourselves and at the same time contaminating other people in our workplace. Now, the first thing that we will do to remove our glove is to grasp on its palmer surface, taking care to touch only uh, glove to glove, okay? So again, uh, always remember that the outer part of the gloves is the dirty side. It's the soiled part. So as much as possible, we do not touch it, okay? Because we do not want to contaminate ourselves, right? So again, all we have to do is just to grasp it on its palmer surface and again make sure that you only touch glove by glove okay and then pull the first glove completely off by inverting or rolling the glove inside out so with the first fingers of the remaining glove hand hold the glove upside down and remove so all we have to do is just to completely off the first glove by rolling or inverting Okay, so this is again, will keep the soiled part of the used gloves from touching the skin of the wrist and of the hand. Now, um, to remove the second part or the second contaminated glove, the first thing we will do is to insert our fingers. Again, make sure not to touch the outer part of the glove and then pull the glove completely off by inverting or rolling the glove inside out. So it's the same procedure that we did on the first glove. So all we have to do is just to completely off by inverting or rolling the glove inside out okay so continue to hold the inverted remove glove again place the first two fingers of the bare hands inside the cuff of the second hand so again the rationale for that is that the soiled part of the glove is folded inside it's uh, that the soiled part or the dirty part is the ones inside to reduce the chance of transferring any types of microorganism by direct contact okay so after we've done that of course it is necessary for us to dispose our soiled gloves to the right container so let me throw it away and then of course after we've done that it is still very necessary for, for us to perform hand hygiene okay so we can either use an alcohol right or we can also you know uh, just wash our hands with soap and water now the rationale for doing a hand hygiene is for us to um, avoid any um, contamination uh, because during the time when we remove our PPE there may be an instance wherein we had contact with any types of microorganism and because of that uh, we want to make sure that we before we get in touch or before we touch anything else that our hands are clean Okay, we don't want to again contaminate ourselves contaminate other people just because we did not uh, Perform hand hygiene after we did a certain procedure. Okay, so that's it for the doffing of gloves and uh, I hope you've learned something from us. Thank you. And again, my name is Christine. Have a great day